So today we got some more updates in RuneScape. This is February the 5th. Basically, well, the first update is that members are getting the Wildy Worm back as part of the Wilderness events. Now, I think the Wildy Worm used to be some sort of special event in the Wilderness where, you know, it could get controlled by a J-Mod and it was like running over everywhere. They're different from the Lava Strike Worms, if you happen to be aware of those in RuneScape 3. Um, but yeah, they added the Wildy Worm. Who knows? I, I don't think the first Wildy Worm will come, come around until a couple hours after. That's after the uh, time of this recording. Well, the second thing is, of course, the bonus XP weekend is going to be on, uh, not this coming Friday, but the next Friday, so probably there will be another episode in between then. But yeah, I expect that prices are going to be all over the place, which is why I bought about 20,000 uh, Dragon Bones to kind of hedge my bets against that, or hedge my risk, because I do want to get prayer XP. And I'm going to have to use up my bonus XP, which I will definitely try to, or I think I definitely will during bonus XP, let's see how much we have. We have 611k bonus XP, so yeah, I shouldn't have any problems with that regard. On the side, I've been watching the RuneScape documentary back from, I think, 2016 or 2017. It's really a good documentary. I mean, I've seen it a couple times now. It's about a little under an hour and a half long. It's on YouTube. Again, if you haven't seen it, it's on the RuneScape YouTube channel, or on the RuneScape official channel. And yeah, just, I highly recommend it, even if, even if it's a little old or if you've seen it before, I would still recommend watching it every now and then. So I'm getting a little bit impatient with the rate at which my emerald necklaces are selling. Now, I sold them for, a, well, the insta buy price, which is about 1 or 2 GP below their mid price. Well, the insta sell price was about 600 GP less, so a little under 4K. And I don't really want to accept 4K for a gold necklace, especially if I could get some more, I guess, at some later point. But at, at the same time, you know, you don't know how far this will fall. So, you know, there's always that to consider. So earlier today I came back from a doctor's appointment and it was about 2 o'clock when I came back and I was really tired, um, I did some things, let's see, I cleaned a little bit, I ate a little bit, and then I just basically played RuneScape for a good long while. I didn't record anything which I didn't feel like it, but then I just, now I kind of figured, well, maybe I should record a little clip for you guys. But basically it's going to be hard to kind of find some interesting content, you know, I'm just basically mining Luminite Rocks and uh, smithing Sorry, not smithing, but crafting emerald jewelry. So there's not really much variety in that. I mean, these are kind of the best point makers. Although, I guess in theory, if I wanted, I could just buy some runite ores and then mine runite. It might be a little bit slower. I'll just go back to the Arsenal's workshop. But again, you know, it's just going to be about grinding away the money. And it's going to take maybe definitely weeks, if not a couple months, to get to one bill. Uh, we're at 306 mil right now in cash. But that, that doesn't include the luminite that I have mined as well as the gold bars and the emeralds that I've bought from GE to go back to um. So, yeah, I'll, I'll try to think of some interesting content I can do besides just sort of making money and maybe just having a little bit of fun, a little bit of fun in the end, on the, on the side, rather. Okay, we just sold off our... <coughs> oh, excuse me, but we just sold off our emerald nexus for almost 10 mil. Very nice. And so we have our emeralds, or not, emeralds here, gold bars here, uh, and our GE slots, so we're going to bank those. And now we're just going to type in Luminite, let's see, Luminite, find out what the insta buy price is, and then sell those uh, ones we have at that price. 2375, so it'll sell for 2374. 2374. Looks like they might be going down in price, but I don't know. And there we go, we're just selling them off right now. I'm getting the impression that making emerald necklaces is probably faster GP per hour than mining Luminite. However, you need to get a good price for your. Uh, outputs and or your inputs you're gonna need some time and you can do that by slow selling or slow buying on the GE in the meantime you could also just do some other activities like mining Luminite, I could also mine Runite if I wanted I think Runite was a little bit slower uh, money wise but it's better XP wise but yeah so yeah just slow buy and sell things and while you're slow buying and selling your supplies and products you can just uh, but use the other stuff up. So for example, I'm using up my what was it? Emeralds, emeralds and emerald necklaces, or not necklaces, but emerald gold bars. And so right now I'm just doing this while I s slow by my luminite, or the luminite stone spirit rather. So a couple of hours ago I was watching a video from Tasty, or more specifically Behemoth from Old School RuneScape, who was being hosted by Tasty. And basically the first minute of that video was basically saying that, you know, RuneScape 3 is dying, you know, we hit a new low of 18,000 players, uh, which is if you look at the numbers, then maybe a little bit it's true. I mean, 18,000 is a 
pretty low number, especially compared to old school. Now, I think it's 18,000 is some sort of minimum amount. I think the max amount is maybe like 23, 24,000 nowadays. But we also have to remember that people have been saying RuneScape 3 is dying for a long time now. And for the most part, it's actually been kind of stable. It hasn't really gotten many new players, as, uh, as in, I guess, more concurrent players. And we also have the fact that old school RuneScape is also sort of losing players at the same time. Uh, maybe it's happening a little bit less dramatic than RuneScape 3. Well, yeah, it's just for those reasons, you know, I got kind of salty after watching this video that, you know, you're saying, oh, RuneScape 3 is dying, and, you know, just everybody's moving over to old school. And it's actually arguing how moving to old school is sort of a bad thing because our SV does take a lot of the microtransactions out. It sort of subsidizes old school RuneScape, so. Uh, yeah. So I think the 18,000 was more of the sort of average between the low and the high. The low is about 24,000, the low is about 13,000, at least according to, uh, was it the RuneScape quarterly hour? I'm not sure, I think. Honestly, though, there are a lot of MMOs out there that would kill for 18,000 concurrent players at a time. Now, I think you guys mean that with all the microtransactions actions that exist in RS3, it's going to, that means that RuneScape, by extension Rune, old school RuneScape, will continue to be profitable for a long time. And an example of this is something that many, many of you have heard of. It's called Runes of Magic. It's basically a World of Warcraft clone, and basically, it's, it's almost dead in terms of player count, but I think as far as at least as far as like two years ago it was still going because they were able to make so much money off their microtransactions so uh, even, as, even if the population of RuneScape 3 drops or tanks really hard I don't see it closing anytime soon so somebody just recommended that I use uh, both stone spirits and I think stone let's see and um it's not stone but like the magic note paper I think they if I miss that I'm using um, stone spirits already because you can fill the ore box with them but uh yeah as far as note paper well Okay, maybe, but I, I think I'm not sure how much note paper are acting with a couple hundred. Let's just check real quick. Okay, so a little bit under 500 GP each. Now, I guess I could try it out definitely just to see what the XP rates are like, but I mean, yeah, the, the dungeon is over here. The, the, the deposit box is right next to the entrance, so it's literally like a 10 15 second round trip. So I don't know if it would actually be worth it to use the magic note paper, but yeah. So I'm sure many of you have heard that Jagex is going to be sold. Uh, currently, it's being held by the Carlaw Group, who's owned it back in 2021, or purchased it back in 2021. And it's going to a group called CVC Venture Capital for over, I think, $1 billion US dollars adjusted. Now, that's sort of a good news, sort of not so good news. Bad news is that, well, I'll start with the good news. Good news is that RuneScape is profitable. Uh, Jagex is a profitable company, so that's always a good thing, because they've been able to grow, I think, from $530 million to almost a billion, which is looks, what, looking, like, looking like what it might be. Uh, the bad thing is, though, it's a billion dollars, and for such a sum of money, CVC is probably looking to find some ways to definitely kind of justify that investment. So, could see more microtransactions coming, at least in RuneScape 3. I don't think they'll happen in old school RS because old school is precisely popular because it's non, because it has no microtransactions. And maybe RuneScape 3 could get more microtransactions, but hopefully, I think that with the experience of Hero Pass and some other stuff, that it'll be actually kind of limited. So there was another behemoth video that dropped about one or two nights ago. Basically, it was reactions of the Carlisle Group selling, selling off Jagex to CBC Venture. And basically, it was, well, I didn't actually watch the video, I just saw the thumbnail. Basically, it was warning that OSRS could see microtransactions. Now, I personally don't think this would happen. I think this would be a really stupid thing to happen if the new owners decided to input micro, microtransactions to old school. Because if you look at the history, you know, with RuneScape 3 and the Hero Pass, and there was like such an outcry over that, made news in some headlines, uh, in some gaming magazines. Now, if you consider the fact that so many people play old school just because it's of the, like the old school, you know, it's genuine, it's not microtransaction based, and then all of a sudden they start introducing microtransactions, then you can lose like many tens of thousands of players, I imagine, almost overnight. And that was just to hurt Jax's bottom line because they have to find some way to kind of recoup that loss in revenue, and it's just, I don't see that happening. So, I th so for now, I think the OSRS is safe, but RuneScape 3 could definitely get more microtransactions. And this is saying, this is me saying from something from a sort of semi-pro microtransaction uh, viewpoint, because you know if you don't have microtransactions, then how are you going to justify giving people a game, especially if it's you know for free? So uh, that's one. I mean, plus, you know, the more profitable you know game gets or jag access, then the longer RuneScape is around for. Fortunately, or the more profit they make, that it's fortunate that uh, RuneScape is going to be still be around.
All right, that's going to be the end of this video. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you all in the next episode. Take care.